going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be throwing in a touchscreen radio on the 2014 Mustang. I am super excited to throw this thing in as I am with every single other mod that I throw on in my car. But this one is very special to me in particular because for the past four years that I've owned this car, I've always wanted a touchscreen. The CD radio button plastic crap that is already on the Mustang is outdated and it looks like crap in my opinion. I don't really like it, but I've been doing a lot of research online through a variety of different double dens that you can purchase for the car and they're really expensive, I'm not gonna lie. There's like $300 ones, there's $200 ones, $150 ones, it's not even for the fact that you just buy the screen, you also gotta buy the whole unit that goes along with it so you can put a screen in, plus brackets as well. So that's a very exp expensive thing that I really didn't want to get myself into even though that was the route I wanted to go, but I found something that possibly could be better that I'm actually really, again, excited to throw on. I feel like it's gonna make a huge difference on the inside of the car to make it look more modern than it already is now. So the radio system I ended up buying was a Phoenix Automotive radio system that's a 12 point one inch touchscreen, which I'm just gonna say 12 inch because that's a lot easier to remember. Just 12 inch touchscreen that covers the entire bezel over on the center console on the Mustang. And I'll show you guys that in a little bit of what exactly it looks like. Though that necessarily wasn't my first choice that I wanted to go with. The first choice I actually wanted to go with was I believe it's a GT500 OEM radio system that has the screen up top, plus the buttons at the bottom. So I just, I don't know, it's just something to me that seemed like it flowed really well with the car and I really liked it and it just made it more modern OEM and it just looked good and it looked like it just came on the car the way it was and it wasn't like too crazy aftermarket. Then I ended up coming across this huge screen. I'm like, how can I not pass this up? And it took me a while to buy it. Again, it took me like four years to just want to change this out and I'm finally being able to get the chance to do so along with many other things I would love to do on the car where you take stuff one at a time. But this was definitely one of those things I want to check off my bucket list because I am tired of seeing this plastic cheap crap all over my radio system. I really don't like it. But I'll have to admit the OEM radio system is very easy and simple to use and the speakers seem to work really well. So that's one thing I'm hoping with this new radio system that is that I'm hoping that the speakers actually work good. I'm hoping that they work a little bit better, but if they don't, then I'm gonna be a little bit worried about that a little bit. But either way, it's gonna look good. I'm gonna make everything work. Hopefully we don't run into issues any along the way. I've done some YouTube research and I'm hoping that this goes really easy and well. And I'm gonna teach you guys something a little bit throughout this process. Cause I know you guys would like to understand how this thing goes in or even just some of the features that are on here. I'm not gonna go too crazy in this video, but I'm definitely gonna show some features that I feel like are important for you guys to see. Let's go do some unboxing on this so you guys can see exactly what we got in the box. Ooh, that screen looks good. Oh my God. This thing is definitely a huge upgrade over the last one I just had. And I think anybody else would agree if they have a stock OEM radio on their car. Another thing I want to point out too, that this gray bezel right here, that's not going to stay gray forever. I'm actually going to keep the liner on this. Cause what I plan on doing though, and I'm hoping that the liner covers the whole thing, which it doesn't. So I'm gonna have to tape some of this off. I'm actually going to paint all this white because my radio on my car currently is white and so is my whole center console. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna tape all this off eventually. I'm gonna paint all this white just so it flows with the rest of the car. But for the meantime, I'm gonna get this thing hooked up, looking all really good and I'm excited to get this thing to see what it looks like. It's gonna be a definitely a learning process along the way, but let's we'll see what this thing can do. Let's go put this on right now. So the fat big piece of plastic that I was telling you guys we're gonna remove is this entire bezel right here. This all stays, this is what gets removed, this entire piece. And the first thing we have to do is actually remove this phone holder that I have in here because putting your phone anywhere else on this car absolutely sucks. I can't put it in the door because when the speakers are on, it rattles. Can't put it in the cup holder because whenever I do and I close it, it gets stuck in the behind here. And I always have crap in here. I don't even like using the cup holders in the car to begin with. They're just in a horrible spot in my opinion. And just anywhere else kind of sucks. But anyways, we're gonna worry about that another day and it's gonna actually think about it's gonna suck when I put this new radio in because with this is gone, then I'm gonna have nowhere to put my phone. But anyways, first thing we're gonna do is just remove off this. Take that off. And then the next thing is this whole entire thing we're actually gonna have to remove. And this is pretty easy. If you have an automatic, then you just open up your little compartment here and this whole thing just pulls right off. You just lift up on here or you could use a plastic trim tool, whatever you wanna do and pull up on the edges and pulls right off. But what I usually do is I just kind of grab it from back here and lift up and the whole thing pops off. If you have a manual, then you're gonna have to twist off the knob, do whatever you gotta do to slide the entire thing off. And the only reason why we have to remove this entire thing is because we have two screws that are right below this, this whole entire compartment that are sitting right here and also right here. And the only way to remove those is by taking off this entire piece. And 
Another important note I want to mention as well is you want to make sure that you remove each one of the clips that are right below some of these buttons because you don't want to yank on the cords then you have buttons that don't work at all anymore. And it's pretty easy to take off the clip. All you do is just pull down the tab and it comes right out. So those two screws I was telling you guys about is one's right here, another one's right here, and the moment we remove that off, this entire thing should pop right off with just a little bit of elbow grease. So as you can see, this whole entire thing is gone. So the next things we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove these four screws. We got one here, one here, and two over here as well. And another thing we're gonna have to remove as well are the another four screws that go here, here, and they also repeats on the same side as well. And I also wanna apologize for this camera angle that you guys are at sitting over in the passenger seat over here, which is nice that you guys are chilling with me. But the only reason why I have you guys over here is because I have a bunch of crap just everywhere else. And if I put you guys in the middle right here, then it's not gonna really be that great of a view. So stick with me when I kind of show you guys along the way. I'm just gonna keep you guys in the same spot. I wish I can give you guys better camera angles but this is the best I can do as of now. So this box is actually really, really big and I'm actually glad it's taken out. And honestly, God, it just feels like a complete waste of space. It's just, you can see kind of how empty it is on the inside if you can kind of see a little bit, but I'm assuming it's just for heat. So you're not really having to worry too much about it, like overheating inside the car because you need to obviously have room in there, but you can see like just a lot of empty space, just pointless empty space. But there's obviously a reason for that. That's the reason why they did it. The last system that we just took out had a whole bunch of plugs that go on the backside of the new one. So all these are gonna be retained or I'm assuming all these are gonna be retained and I'm not sure sure exactly which one goes to what but I did what last thing I did see though on the other hand is all the cores that are back here are labeled in some sort of way so that should make it easier for us when we're putting everything back together but other than that everything seems pretty self-explanatory so other than that I don't think it's really anything any more than just kind of showing you guys along the way because it's pretty much just plug and play after that the only thing that you're gonna have to retain on this system is these white clips. These white clips actually go onto the new system because on the new system, they don't come with anything at all. And they should be pretty easy to come take. Oh, I just broke one off, awesome. But you're supposed to be taking off all these clips and by taking off all those clips, it should go onto this new system so everything can plug in nice and easy when you are done. So the plugs on the back of this radio system actually seem to be very similar to the ones that are over on the inside of here that came already from the wiring harness. And Honest to God, they should be, because if they're not, then that's gonna be a really big issue. But from here, it should be just plug and play. It seems pretty self-explanatory because all the sizes kind of go corresponding with whatever is in here. So we're just gonna go plug and play and hopefully it works. If not, we'll use our instructions. Did you miss me? You'll miss you there. Wait a minute, there's a camera start with screwing on this car you actually have the key in the on position in order for the radio to turn on because even just having it plugged in is not going to turn on your radio the only way for this radio to work is if your car is running or if the key is in the on position because if you turn it off completely your radio will not stay running at all it will turn off completely compared to the other radio where you could turn off the car and keep the doors closed and the radio will still work it's not the case for this one this is a completely different unit so this screen here takes about 30 seconds for it to start up when you put your key in the on position or in the run position so after the startup screen is complete you go to this screen you have the calendar, you have the time, this cool Mustang logo on the front, and you also have the AC unit at the bottom. And at the bottom of this AC unit, you have a lot of different controls like your AC, AC Max, you have the window defrosters, the rear ones, and then you also have the recycled air and different other features throughout here. If you have seat warmers, there's other options for this within the settings. But as you go up here, you have the mute button up here, which I have it currently turned all the way down, so it just shows it's on mute. Right here, you could dim your screen. There's three different settings. And also right here, I like using this feature honestly the most on the car because when you do use it at night, this screen is very bright. I'm even gonna be honest with you. Even when you do turn down the brightness, it is very bright at night. So one thing I do like doing is turning it off completely and it makes the cabin really dark and it makes it feel very soothing when you drive. Going back up to the top, you have the time, the temperature, and you also have the power button, which I don't think I've ever used before. And I'm pretty sure this turns it off and it looks like it does. Up here, you can close out your apps, which I kind of forget to do sometimes, even on my own personal 
personal phone and you start closing everything out. This is literally just like an iPad. This is literally what it is, but built for your car. And if I haven't already talked about it already, you have the navigation setting where you actually have to have Wi-Fi for this. And for whatever reason, I actually have Wi- Oh, there it goes. Usually I don't have Wi-Fi for this car, Wi-Fi for this car, and it doesn't really work too well. So I'd recommend either investing in a Wi-Fi plug-in unit for your car or you can end up getting a hotspot for, for your phone, which can also work for this. You also have the radio section here, and obviously we can set to whatever you want. You can set whatever preset radio stations you want to use, but I honestly don't listen to anything on here. I usually just use the Bluetooth that's already currently on my phone. And one nice thing I do like about this system that would compare to the last one is that you can literally adjust whatever you want within the sound. You can adjust the bass, the middle, tremble, it hurts and just so forth so forth and you also have these settings over here we can set it to classic pop rock hall and cinema and those are probably just different settings throughout that make it sound a little bit better the music setting i don't really use to be honest with you and because i don't have any music i keep on my phone or even keep in the system you can actually put a hard drive on the back of this if you really want to put music in or you could probably buy it through the app store i'm not 100 percent sure but i really don't use that unit climb it up top i don't really click the one up here i'm usually clicking at the stuff that's bottom down here because it's a lot easier to access it through the main screen but it literally does the exact same features as i was showing you guys earlier the video up here again kind of matches with the music because with this, the music section you have to have files on your system in order for it to play videos and if you're thinking that this is like oh i can go and watch youtube or something on here well it doesn't really work that way with this video section you can download the youtube app you could probably download tiktok and all those other different features on here but for what it comes with you can't do that to the bluetooth setting also one of my favorites the keypad, I don't really use. I'm assuming that's where you can just type in the phone numbers and you can call whoever you want. But honestly, I don't really call when I'm driving and people usually call me, but that's probably that what that feature is for. Your recents, when you have people calling you or when your phone's Bluetooth is on, it'll show all the numbers of people who have called you within the past couple days, hours, minutes, whatever you want to call it. The one downside about this is that when you do have it in, I don't have my Bluetooth on at the moment to show you guys because I don't want it to connect to the sound of the car and to make it sound completely weird making this video. It'll show your contact's phone numbers. It won't actually show their name. So that's one we weird feature about this. I don't know if you can go in the settings and change that, but it doesn't really bother me too much because I really don't talk on the phone when I'm driving. Phone book, I'm, that's whoever's in your contacts. Again, it just shows the phone numbers. The settings, that's where you could put in your own Bluetooth device name in here. I have it listed as Logan's BT, so Logan's Bluetooth. And you also could put the pin of what, whatever you want it to be. And honestly, I left it at 0000 because, I mean, no one else uses it but me. And if you ever want anybody else to go join your Bluetooth on your car, except for you, if you have like a passenger, then you can go ahead and put their Bluetooth device in here, connect it, and they can go play it through their phone. So Bluetooth music, this is actually where you're going to be using to play music from your phone to the actual radio itself. By having the Bluetooth on, you're going to have to go through some settings. You have to type in some codes, this and that. Nothing too, too insane. It's just like any other device when you do have Bluetooth on. And when you connect it to Bluetooth, it'll show connected to, I'm just going to give an example because my name, it pops up. It'll say Logan's Bluetooth. And so by doing that, it'll also show the song, song name on here and it'll show the bar graph right here. Whenever music's playing, it'll just go up and down as if it's like playing the beats. It's just kind of like a visual presentation. The mirror link, I'm not gonna do this right now because I can't do it while I'm recording with you guys on the phone. But if you do so, it'll show you the steps on how to do the mirror link. So you can watch YouTube and then you can go on Instagram, you can go on TikTok, you can do whatever you want to do. And it literally, whatever you're doing through your phone, it's going to match straight into this unit. I don't really use this too much. I mean, if you're going to want to park on the side of the road and watch a movie, or if you're on a road trip and a buddy over here, which no one's sitting there at the moment, but... If you have a buddy and they want to watch a movie while you're driving, just don't get distracted. I'm not recommending you do this, but if they're wanting to go do something on the screen, they could definitely do so. You also have Internet Explorer. Again, you're going to need Wi-Fi for this. Like again, I recommend you getting a plug-in for your car. You can plug in an OBD2 and you can connect to Wi-Fi that way, or you can use that hotspot through your phone, which I rec also recommend as well. The aux feature I don't use because honestly, I have the Bluetooth in here and that's the last thing I really need. Settings is probably one of the most important features on the system because when you connect to the settings, it shows a whole bunch of different options. I've already talked to you guys about the equalizer on here, the dimmer, that also is another feature on here if you wanna dim the lights on this actual system, if you wanna make it really bright in the daytime, you turn this down, you can see that the screen dims if you wanna turn it up, and that's also how it works for night. The system settings, on the other hand, this is another feature that a lot of you guys might, or more than likely are gonna be using, is this right here. You have, I'm not even gonna go through the list of all this stuff on here, but as you guys can see, these are some of the features that it displays. Like display speed, I actually had an issue with that. I really don't know how to make it work. If anybody does know how to make it work and they have this unit, please let me know. Because the only thing it's really showing is the RPM gauge moving, but it won't show my speedometer. 
I mean, my speedometer works on here, but not on the system. It'll just stay at zero, but it'll show my RPM gauge goes, goes up. It's kind of cool. I'd love to have that feature, but I can't use it right now for that reason. Track is when you have a backup camera. I realize it like turns the lines in the back whenever you're backing up. I don't like using it because it seems like it was a little wacky a little bit and it didn't seem like it was lining up correctly of how I want to use it. Maybe it was just a, a user error, but for me, that's what the features I had to run into. Um, auto run nav, that's if whenever you turn on your car, I believe that it goes straight to the navigation. Touch tone is whenever you click on this and it's gonna make a sound every time you do so. I don't wanna hear that annoying shit, so I turn that stuff off. Right camera, it was already on, I believe. Front camera, I have it off because I don't have a front camera. Warning sound, I definitely want that shit off because that's gonna get really annoying at some point. It's kind of like your seatbelt noise whenever you start hearing that thing chime, you just wanna rip your hair out. Reverse type aftermarket camera. I currently put in an aftermarket camera on the car not too long ago, and I ended up having to run all the wires up to this unit, which was not hard at all. Everything is labeled accordingly, and it makes it so much easier to do so when everything is labeled. If you guys have any questions about that, you guys can leave them in the comment section down below. Or if you guys would like me to make a video about it, which I wasn't really planning on doing because I thought it might be a boring video. There's a million different videos out there based on putting backup cameras in. But if you guys would like me to make a video, I will definitely do so. Reset wallpaper. That's, I believe, whenever you turn off your unit and it like you completely just like hard reset it, then it'll go back to the main wallpaper that you currently had on the car when you first got it. TV module, I don't use that. Brake detect, I really don't know what that does, but it kind of self, sounds self-explanatory. Track line is that line in the back whenever you're using your backup camera. I don't know what the old and the new one does. I just left it at that. If you have a car that's kilometers per hour, you're gonna to wanna to click that. I have it at miles per hour because I live in the US and I, want to, and I only understand miles per hour. I don't really understand kilometers per hour too much. So if you guys wanna just use this setting on your car, you could definitely do so because this has caused me no issues at all and I actually really like the setup I have now, but it might be different for each one of you depending on what you guys have in your system. But for just a simple system with a backup camera, this is exactly what I have. For a more setting, if you guys are getting really anxious and curious about what that does, this is pretty much just your normal settings as if you have like your phone, for example, or if you have an Android settings where it just pretty much goes in here, you have the Wi-Fi data usage, display, just the normal stuff you'd see in a settings like on a phone or an iPad, for example. You have the wheel settings, which this one caused me a little bit of issues at first, but I ended up having to swap over my settings in order for it to work. But if you guys wanna use this on here, you guys could definitely do so. This is pretty much the, the diagram that lays out for you. So like all you're really doing, it'll give you the instructions up here on how to do it. But the way you wanna do it though is please select a button from the below pair. And so what you do is you'd hold down a button, you'd click here, and then it would pair to that. You'd hold button right here, click there for example, then it would work even though just don't follow that stuff because that looked like it was completely wrong. But I was just giving a demonstration. So as you guys can see, that's that. System info. This is another feature that's kind of like a hidden feature, like an Easter egg, I guess you want to call it, even though it's really not. But if you hold this down, you actually get a password. And I believe it is 8861, 8860. Okay, I'm really bad at this. Six and a half hours later. 1688 was a code. So once you get into the setting, you have many different options in here. You got the boot logo, you have the new car info, and you have the protocol, whatever that means. And so as you do all that, I mean, it gives you different features on how, actually how to change the front picture on the car. So I don't really use this feature too, too much. I only changed this feature when I first got this radio because it was showing that I had a heated seat and it was showing different other little features I really didn't already have on the car. So I ended up swapping it over from Mustang High that it was currently on to Mustang, just a normal Mustang. It wasn't Mustang Low, not Mustang Medium, if that, if that even means that. I just switched it to the normal Mustang feature and it ended up making everything normal for this car because I have a base model Mustang and that's exactly what I needed was just the base. Again, I don't know exactly what each feature does. I just know on the Mustang High, it shows that heat seats and I don't have heated seats even though I really don't want them either. System settings, this one's kind of like an advanced system settings if you really want to go in the depth of it. I don't really don't go into this either but when you first get this system you might want to go into the settings a little bit. I believe one of these two is to be able to change the upper bar in here. I haven't really screwed around with it too much. A Bluetooth module, I didn't really mess with either. I mean a lot of this stuff on here I really don't mess with but if you really want to go fine tune this in here you could definitely do so if you guys want to just follow off whatever features I have on here already then you can go right ahead. But yeah, there's just many different features on here that you can go from, but you guys can all follow along my list that I already have already on the car, car. It's no secret of what I have and I'm not really trying to keep it a secret. I had a lot of questions about this when I first got this radio. I did a lot of YouTube research and I don't know exactly everything that you need to do, but I definitely know enough to where I can get through with using this system. It's a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's very straightforward and simple. But once you change all that, you wanna make sure you click save because if you don't, then all that stuff you did on here will be a waste of time and nothing will work. Or you can click save and reboot. So going back to the settings, you also have the reset button, which I'm not gonna click. You got the advanced twos, 1680. 
So here's the advanced setting. Like I would say that this wasn't the most advanced setting, but this is like the mid advanced setting, but it kind of offers the same things as the normal system settings that I showed you guys earlier, but kind of goes in a little bit more depth tune with it. I really don't know why that said Camry up there. Anywho, and all this stuff on here, again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Radio region, you could change all this stuff if you're in Europe, if North America, South America, Russia, Japan, RDS. I just have that on because I don't know what it does. And I was just curious what it did. But if you want to change the boot logo, then you could change it to whatever wallpaper that you want. But it has to match with 768 by 1024 of the image to be adjusted, which it says on here. So if you have an image, it has to fit within those parameters in order for it to be your boot logo. Appless, I have never used on here, but it has all these other different features on here like Gmail, Play Store, which is probably where you download your apps, some maps, YouTube, which I haven't used either. The manual for this whole system is in here. I actually have used that and it has helped me a little bit. Kind of goes in the deeper depth with how this whole system works. If you really want to start reading it, but I know a lot of you guys don't. That's why you're watching this video. DVR, I don't really use. File manager, I actually was super bothered by the fact that this radio system came with random videos on here and random music that was just for test features on here. And I was like, there's no way I want that on here because that just would bother me because I'm like OCD about that. So I ended up just deleting whatever I could find on here that related to that music and those videos just to save up more space on here if I decide to ever put anything on here. You got different folders on here. If, if you ever just wanted to put things in there, that's just how folders work. The rear camera feature on this car, I don't use at all because I'm assuming while you're driving, you can actually click on your rear camera and watch it, but it has never really worked on here. I don't know if there's a certain connection I have to use in order for it to work, but it doesn't really bother me too much because I can care less what's behind me when my mirror shows me everything when I'm driving from live picture. I'm not saying this is, but this I rely on a lot more than that. And if you want to go put this in reverse to show you guys an idea, this thing will actually show the picture of wherever you're reversing. That's the purpose of a backup camera. But if you don't have a backup camera, this whole screen will be black. So it kind of bothered me a little bit that this screen was black and I ended up having to put a backup camera in there. Just feel like just the, the comfort of like knowing that, all right, this unit can be complete. The system also offers sensors. So if you have sensors on your car, it'll tell you how far forward you are, how far back you are. But since I don't have sensors on the car, I'm not gonna use them, nor do I really ever plan on using it. And another thing I do like about this car that whenever you do open your door, it'll tell you what door is open or the trunk or that door, even though there's only two doors in here, there's not, it's not really hard to determine what door is open or closed. That's pretty much the entire system as a whole. Overall, I really like this unit. It works really well. I have no complaints about it whatsoever because honestly, this thing works as it should. I do realize with this unit that it does lag just a little bit. Nothing too, too crazy where it's making me bang my head and go batshit crazy about it. But nine times out of the 10, this unit works really well. And if it does lag, it's only for about 30 seconds to a minute. And honestly, it's not even enough to go again crazy about. But one thing I do want to briefly mention, because I don't think I brought it up too much in this video, the sound in this system works so well compared to the last one that we originally had in the car. Don't get me wrong. I really like the last unit that we had, but this one I really love. The sound on this really bumps hard. Like it's to the point where I can only keep the volume at maybe one or two because if I go any more, this thing will literally feel like it's gonna blow out my speakers. It works that good. And with the adjustable features on there where you could adjust the bass, the tremble, the middle, sound, whatever you wanna do, this thing literally can control to any way you want to any music that you want. And the thing just, it's awesome. I highly recommend it to anybody who's looking forward to getting a radio system get it for $400. This thing is definitely a steal compared to like the other units out there that I was doing research for months on and for you had to pay like $300 for the radio. Then you had to pay another like 250, $300 just for the trim that goes all the way around the radio as well. And I'm like, there's no way I want to spend $600 on plastic. Like, no, like no way I'm doing that. Then I came across this. I came with the plastic and the radio touchscreen everything I would ever want, plus the mirror link in here that I always wanted that I seemed like I never use, but Bluetooth was my main thing I absolutely wanted. And I, again, have absolutely zero complaints. If you guys have any questions about this unit, you guys know exactly where to leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll more than likely get back to you if you guys leave a comment. So don't be scared to leave one. And if I don't get back to you, there's probably gonna be someone in there that can answer your question if I can't. If you really enjoyed this video, please like it up down below, subscribe to the channel, share it to your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.